So in case you forgot, TCL took its most popular TV model, one of the most popular TV models on the market today, and gave it an 8K screen. 8K, 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 we could talk about it all day, but what else is different? Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison, and today we're gonna unbox, set up, and get first impressions of the TCL R648. That would be the six series model with the 8K screen. And yes, we will debate 8K until we're blue in the face. The merits, the lack thereof, that'll be part of the process. But there's got to be other stuff that's different about this TV, right? I mean, they're not just upcharging for the 8K screen, or are they? We're gonna find out all about that. This is the 75 inch model. Something tells me that unboxing this thing is gonna be a little bit of a process. So let's not waste any more time and get right to it. Just kidding, there is one more thing. You know how I roll. I have a question for you and I wanna hear about your answer in the comment section. When I say 8K, does it trigger you? Do you get upset about it? Is it really worth all that? Let me know down in the comments. I know you will. And while you're down there, please click like and subscribe because we're gunning to get past a million subs. And you know, when we do, we're gonna have a giveaway. I don't know what it's gonna be yet, but trust me, it will be epic and you will want to be part of it. So help us get there. Thanks as always. Now, let's do this. All right, so here's everything in the box. Like I mentioned before, we've got a different center style stand, which I'm a big fan of already, especially when we're talking about a 75 inch TV. Uh, screws to go with the stand, batteries for the remote, and look at this thing. Uh, that is a very different looking Roku TV style remote. I like the look a lot of that. Power cord, some product literature, I'll get that out of the way and bring in this. This did not come with the TV. This is Roku's new uh, voice remote pro. Uh, we're going to take a look at this a little bit later in the context of the TV. Roku sent this along because they knew I was getting this TV. So we'll dig into that a little bit later on. Now to the TV. So this stand could not be easier. The plastic part is going to be towards the back. So in this case with the TV facing down, we want it to go up and then we just slot it in place and do four screws to get it secure. And here we are, back of the TV shot, and we've actually got some stuff to talk about here. So first of all, ignore the bubbles, that's just plastic, we'll take that off in a second. What I wanna call your attention to is this piece of plastic here. It's an attractive textured piece of plastic that goes all the way down to the central stand. And then on either side of the stand itself is a little bit of cable management. Now, I don't think you're gonna be packing a ton of HDMI cables in there, but at least it routes it right out the back of the TV if you're stand mounting so you don't see your cables. Good move, TCL. The other obvious thing here would be a subwoofer. It's not often that we see these things exposed. Also, I like the driver type. It's not your typical cone. It's got a flat face to it. Uh, quite a bit of excursion here. I would guess this to be like a three and a half, maybe four inch driver. We'll measure it later. At any rate, it's not operating on its own. While we had the TV face down putting the stand in, we noticed the speakers firing down from the TV. But unlike most TVs, it's not just a single driver on the left and right hand side. We actually have separate tweeters and mid-range drivers. So at least from the looks of things, I'm kind of hopeful that this TV sounds pretty good too. So right there, already we're looking at some upgrades over the standard 4K 6 series model. Now elsewhere back on this TV, we've got the four HDMI inputs. As you can see, none of them are labeled 4K 120, but the TV does have THX game mode. So we'll get into that a little bit later as well. Now let's flip this thing around. So here we are, front of the TV, a lot less to talk about here than the back of the TV, which I think is kind of the point. Mostly bezel-free design. We do have a little bit of a border down along the bottom. The trim on the sides matches the brushed metal uh, accents on the center stand, which I think is great. Lot of anti-glare coating going on here, which is great for dissipating the light that's coming into the room. We'll see how that affects the picture quality when we get into the full review. Otherwise, I mean, it's just, a fairly attractive TV. I was a little bit concerned about the stability of the TV, but that is not a problem. What is interesting, however, hear that, is that the stand clicks when this thing rocks back and forth, which I suppose is really only a problem if you have an earthquake, maybe? I don't know. Anyway, let's turn this thing on. All right, so Roku TV setup time. Normally, this is where I complain about how long the process takes, 
but I am pleased to report it took no time at all. Whizzed right through the whole thing. I don't know if that's because the TV is faster at it or if Roku has changed the process. For now, I don't really care. I'm just really happy that it doesn't take any time at all. I will check with uh, TCL on that and uh, report back on the full review whether this TV is rocking a different processor or not. When it comes, however, to the picture setup stuff, I'm assuming it's going to be the same process. So let's dig into that real quick. Okay, so we'll start with apps. I pulled up Netflix and an SDR title. Press pause on that. I'll press the star key to get at our settings. And right off the bat, we can see that we're on brighter for TV brightness. And the picture mode is on low power, which is interesting because it's extremely bright in low power mode. I'm gonna go ahead and move this to movie because that's gonna warm up the color temperature and it's gonna be the most accurate out of the box. You can select normal if you want to. Cooler color temperature there. We'll go back to movie and I'm gonna go ahead and knock this down to normal uh, for the time being. It'll be a little bit easier on our camera. Now we can go into picture settings and access the same stuff if we want to. Local contrast is set to high. That's for the full array local dimming backlight settings. We'll go down here to see that color temperature is at warm, which is where I want. And because we're in the movie mode, action smoothing, action clarity, and LED motion clarity are all turned off by default, which I think is great. I don't think that that's been the case in the past. Yet another change I think Roku has made. Uh, regardless, I'm super happy to see that's the case. Now I'm in a Dolby Vision title, and I'll go into here. We'll see that TV brightness has held at normal from my previous setting and it's at normal Dolby Vision here. Let's go into picture settings and move that to, we'll go with dark Dolby Vision for now. Scroll down and we'll see that color temperature is warm and action smoothing has been turned off. Great, there's a lot less work for me to do than I expected. All right, so I've pulled up YouTube and an SDR title to see if my settings have carried over and it appears that they have. Sure enough, we're in the movie mode Local contrast is still high, color temperature is warm. That's fantastic. So it looks like once you've made an adjustment to one of the apps, that's going to carry over. Now, I did Dolby Vision earlier, but I did not do standard HDR10, so let's pull one of those up. So I've got an HDR10 title loaded up on YouTube here, and it looks like it is assumed that I would want dark HDR from my prior settings, so that's great. Uh, dynamic tone mapping is on, which is interesting. Local contrast still set to high, warm color temperature, and no smoothing. That's pretty intuitive in terms of picture settings. I feel like I've done a lot of complaining about how complicated it is to set up a Roku TV for the picture settings, and this has been fantastic so far. Now we just need to check our HDMI ports. So we pulled up our 4K Blu-ray player. This is the Spears & Munsell UHD HDR Benchmark Test Disc. It is an HDR10. We'll pull up our picture settings and look at that. We're in dark HDR. So it appears that the adjustments that I made to the apps have carried over for our HDMI inputs. And you know what? I could not be happier that's the case. This is a huge improvement on how it was to set up a Roku OS operated TV in the past. This is a big breakthrough and I'm just super stoked that that's the case. So first impressions, really good so far. I mean, setting the TV up was a treat, which got us started off on the right foot, but that's just the TV OS, right? In terms of picture quality, not only am I not seeing any alarm bells, but things look solid subjectively. I mean, the color looks great out of the box, no major backlight anomalies. In fact, with the lights on, I'm not seeing any halo at all. We'll have to darken this room to get into that. No dirty screen effect straight out of the box. I think, again, we're gonna have to use some patterns to find anything if it exists. Really, really solid start. And honestly, I think one of the most important things that we can do with this TV is bring in the 4K version and put it right next to this TV. Because again, this is just subjective. I feel like this TV is way more impressive than the 4K version. So I think more is going on here than just the 8K screen. And we've seen some of that. The premium audio system is just one indication, but I think there may be other things going on underneath the hood that make this TV better than the 4K version. So we're gonna dig deep into that. And believe me, I'm gonna make this TV a priority. You can expect to see our full review very soon. 
Thanks, as always, for watching, everyone. Are you as excited about this TV as I am? And what do you need to know from the review? Leave me a comment about that down below. Like and subscribe. And here's two other videos that I think you'll like.